Yeah, so let us look at let us look at this question. So here yeah, you'll be told table one shows cost by 170, 170 students in a mechanical science test. So these are the marks are in form of classes, are grouped into classes, then frequency gives you the number of students, isn't it? Then you'll be told, given that the median mark is the median mark is 35, you'll be told to determine the value of x and, and y, isn't it? And you'll be told to determine the, the mode. So what is happening here is that you have unknowns in the table, isn't it? To get unknowns, you use what is given to get what is required. So the first thing you'll be told, the score is by 170 students, meaning they have told you n is 170. So the moment they tell you n is 170, n is found by adding up all the frequencies, isn't it? Meaning if you add up all the frequencies, you are supposed to get what? 170. So 10 plus 20 plus x plus 40 plus y plus 25 plus 50 should give you what? 170. So start from there. 10 plus 20 plus x plus 40 plus y plus 25 plus 15 should give you the total number because frequencies are the number of students, isn't it? So if you add this, what do you get? 10 plus 20 is 90, 70, 110, isn't it? So you have 110 plus x plus y is 100. And so 110 going to the other side, you remain here with x plus y is equal to 60. 60, equation 1. Then equation 2, you've been given the median mark is, is 35. And how do you get the median? The median is found by the lower class limit plus n over 2 minus c over f into i. Where this is the lower class limit of the median class, n over 2 is representing the the median value, isn't it? Then C is the cumulative frequency of the class above the, the median class, isn't it? Then F is the frequency of the median class. And I is the, the class, the class interval. Are we together? Now you start. Which one is the median class? If you take N over 2, you need to get that value N over 2, isn't it? Which class does it form? Are we together? So for you to check that, you must have a column of the cumulative frequency. It's a column of a column of C. Where you are going to check, isn't it? Have a column of C there. So add a column of C. You want to check which class is the median. It's the median class. So this is the column of C. Out of this end, you've only counted 10, isn't it? Then at this end, it is 10 plus 20, you counted 30. Then at this end, it is 30 plus x, you've counted 30 plus x, isn't it? Then at this end, 30 plus x plus 40, you've counted 70 plus x. Then at this end, 70 plus x plus y, you've counted 70 plus x plus plus y. At this end, 70 plus x plus y plus 25, you've counted 95 plus x plus plus y. 95 plus x plus y plus 15, at that end, you've counted 110 plus x plus y. So you follow all this, isn't it? So what is the median? So your n over 2 is going to be what? n over 2 is going to be? n plus 1. Yes, because this is even, isn't it? This is an even, meaning there are two values in the middle, isn't it? And the two values in the middle are? The 170 divided by 2, which is giving you? The 85. The 85 term, isn't it? And then you add one to it, the other one is the 86, the 86 term. So there are two terms in the, in the middle. Are we together? So we now start, the average will be 85.5. So in many cases, when you have unknown, the better way is to get each and every one of them, isn't it? Are we together? That is always the best approach when you have unknowns. Don't go to the average at once. 170 plus 1 divided by 2, 85 plus 86 divided by 2, 85.5. That is an average when you are 
everything known. But if you have a known, you are determining the unknown value. Can you do them separately for you to form simultaneous equations so that you will only use the equations which are easier to deal with? Are we together with what we are saying? To go for So, what will you have? Which class do we have the 85th term and the 86th term? So maybe if you take the average, what do you have there to be the average? 85.5 term. 85.5 term. So where is that term? It is in which class? Seventy. If you look at this class, we have 70 plus plus x, so it should be somewhere 70 plus x plus y, isn't it? Because 70 plus x, you don't know whether x is less than 50 so that it is not reaching 85, isn't it? Are you seeing that? So it is this class, we're using the class 70 plus x plus y, because we don't know the value of x and y, isn't it? So we are dealing with the class of 70 plus x plus y. Which class is that? 42? 40 to 50. So you've identified the class is 42 to 50, isn't it? So the class 40 to 50, what are the limits of that class? So this other class, 40 to 50, this class, the average year is 40, the average year is 50. So the class boundaries are the same as the class limits, isn't it? So the same as class limits is also from 40 to 50. So what is the class interval I? Upper class limit minus lower class limit, which is 10. Then what is the frequency of this class? The frequency of this class, 40 to 50, it is 70 plus 70 plus x plus y. So we did not take this class 70 plus x because we don't know the value of x. The value of x can be less than 50 so that we don't reach 85, isn't it? Are we together? Yes. Frequency is y. Frequency? Y. Oh, frequency is y. Good, 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 good. Frequency is y. The frequency of f of that class is y. is y. Are we together there? Good. So frequency is y. So after you've done that, you now start moving and you check <coughs> equation. The lower class limit of this class you found is l. You found to be forty. Because remember, these are approximated value, meaning when you are going to determine this value, you are going to round off to the nearest. So whether you take the 85 term or 86 terms or the average, you are going to get a value which you are going to round off to a whole number. Are you seeing that? Are you seeing what I was trying to imply? So I was trying to imply whether you use 85 or 86 or the average, you will get a number which can be rounded off to be a whole number to represent a frequency. Is that understood? Yeah, so that is what I imply when the median has two values, 85 term and 86 term, you can use either of them or the average. Then in the end, you, you round off it to a whole value. See there? Good. So what do we have there? The lower class limit is 40. Then it is plus your n over 2 minus c. So your n over 2, you found the average of the two terms to be 85 point. 85.5, then minus the cumulative frequency of the class above it. And the class above it is this class before it. 70 plus? Yes. Yeah, so 70, so it is minus 70 plus x. So remember, if you open that small bracket, that plus is going to change to minus. Because 70 plus x is one thing. So negative into positive. Are you seeing what is happening there? Negative into positive. If you open that bracket, the positive sign changes to? Because they are my minus outside, isn't it? Is that okay? Then it is over the frequency of that class. And the frequency of this class 40 to 50 is? Is y. Then you'll be told this median was found to be what? It was found, where is i? Because it is supposed to be times i. i you found to be? 10. Ten. Then you'll be told the whole of that median is giving you what? 35. So you start. Start by removing this term, 40 going on the other side of the equation, it becomes 35 minus 40, isn't it? Yes. So 35 minus 40, you will remain with 85.5 minus, no, that one can also be simplified. So 40 going the other side, you will get 35 minus 40, which now becomes negative, negative 5, isn't it? Then the next thing, 
inside this bracket, 85 minus 70, 85 minus 70 is going to be 15.5. So we have 15.5 minus x over y is equal to negative 5, isn't it? So we remove this term here. To remove this term, we divide both sides by, by 10. So here we will remain with 15.5 minus x over y is equal to negative 0. Point is supposed to negative 0 0.5 because negative 5 divided by 10 is negative 0 0.5. We are simplifying, isn't it? Yes. Are we together? So what do you do? So you multiply both sides by y to remove y in the denominator. So you get 15.5 minus x is supposed to negative 0 0.5 y. y. So which equation do you get there? So you bring y this side. Then you check the constant on the other side, isn't it? Or you take x the other side. If you take x the other side, negative x becomes positive x, isn't it? So you'll have 15.5 is equal to x, then the other side we add minus 0 0.51. See, we now have equation 2. Are we together? We now have equation 2. So equation 1 and 2 will now give us the solution. So equation 1 we had x plus y is equal to 60, isn't it? See, the best method we can use is Substitution or elimination is good, senior. X plus Y in equation 1, we found the 60, then here, X minus 0. Point, X minus 0. 0.5 Y, we found this 15 point, is 15.5. Is 15.5. So, if you subtract the two equations to eliminate X, isn't it? X minus X is 0, then Y, positive, remember there's a silent positive one here. So, look, positive 1 minus negative 5. Some of you normally mess there, isn't it? Positive 1 minus negative 0 0.5. See, negative into negative is going to be plus. So you are going to get 1.5y 1. 1. to be equal to 16 minus 15.5. 44.5. So for you to get y, you divide both sides by 1. Point, by 1.5. So you end up getting y to be what? 29.67 You get 29.67 Have you seen what you found? So after you found 29.67 Y is a whole number You round it off to the next whole number Are you seeing that? So the next whole number after 29.67 is what? Meaning Y was that That's the reason why we say Whether you use 85, 4, 86 or this you will get a number, meaning one of them will give you a whole number. Well, if somebody just uses 85, you might have just found 30 sharp. Are you seeing that? If somebody uses 86, you might have found even 29.6 that or 30.0 something, still rounding up to that. Are you seeing the idea? Because these are approximated values, isn't it? Are we together? So you get the median to be, you get y to be, y to be 30. So once you found y to be 30, now what is x? Because x plus y is 60. So what is x? X is also? X is also 30. See here? And you can see it was 60 which was left to get everything. So Y is 30, it means X is also 30. Will be X plus 30 is 60. X is also 30. So you determine the value of X and, and Y. So the same thing we were saying, if you took this value to be just 85, isn't it? If you took it to be just 85, it was going to be here, 85 minus, minus 70. Meaning here you are going to get 15 sharp, isn't it? So after getting 15 sharp, this was just going to remain as 15 sharp. So look at what I was trying to imply. It was going to remain 15 sharp, 15 sharp. It was going to remain 15 sharp. So after that, here it's going to be 60 minus 15. This was going to be 45 sharp. So you see what you are going to get? 45 divided by 1.5. So you are going to get 30 sharp. Yes. So you are now trying to understand what I was trying to imply. Yes. When you are looking for the unknown values, just take the n minus so the over 2 divided by 2. To use the, the first one, the defeat term. You will get it direct. Okay? Yes. Because remember, this average was getting you the average of the 2. Is that okay? And that average of 2 is more approximated. And we don't need something which is more approximated. So, the implication is now well spent out, isn't it? Are we together there? To go Yes. Good. So, why you found is that you will get it regardless, okay? Good.
So after that, after we found X and Y, what do we now need? We just go and put them where there is X, we put our X is 30, where there is Y, we put our Y is 30. So what is the mode? The mode is given by the lower class limit of the model class plus D1, D1 over D1 plus D2 into, into I. Okay? So there I think I've made a very good implication there. When you are looking for the unknown values, just use the first value in the main, the 85th term, like in this case, isn't it? Don't take both the average like that case. You see this criteria here is always getting this separate and this is separate is when you get the average, isn't it? So it means you ought to have worked them out separately. We'll always give you the best values, okay? Yes. Good. What do we have here? The lower class limit of the model class plus D1 over D1 plus D2 into I. So we want to see the model class is the class with the highest frequency, isn't it? So which class has the highest frequency? Go to the column of F. 30 to 40. 40. This class, the highest frequency is 40. So the class is 32? 30 to 40. So once you've identified the class, we need the class interval. So we need to identify the limits, isn't it? The average is 30 plus 30 divided by 2 is still 30. The average is 40 plus 40 divided by 2 is still 40, isn't it? So the class limits are still the same, 30 to 40, isn't it? So the class interval I is the upper class limit minus the lower class limit, which is 10, isn't it? Then after that, we need to get the D1, D2, and the D1 plus D2. So D1 is the frequency of, so the D1 is there in front, then the D2 is the second, isn't it? So D1 is the middle here, 40 minus 30, isn't it? Are we together? 40 minus 30. You get 10. And the D2 is in the middle here, 40 minus 30 again. You get? Are we together? You get? 10. So D1 plus D2 is? 20. So can you now get me the mode? What is the lower class limit of the model class? You found it to be 30. Is that okay? Then it is plus. What is D1? You found is 10. Over D1 plus D2, you found is? Is 20. Then the class interval I, you found is? Is 10. So if you do that substitution, what do you get to be the mode? The mode is also? The mode is also 35. Is that okay? Good. So that is how to get the unknowns when you are determining the median, when the data is even, two values in the middle. Okay? So you can use either, but it is good to use the first one. It's what in many cases portrays the median. After that, we want to check a different thing.